Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're talking all about adrenal fatigue and I want to make this clear right from the beginning. This is a frequently asked questions and a Q&A. So if you have any questions for me while we're live, make sure you, you leave them for me so that I can answer them for you. So I have a few questions already and I have a few uh, template questions that I, that, I, that I think are really good like basics just to just to cover to make sure you actually know like what this is and like how to know if this is a problem that you have. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start there, um, and and we'll take it from there. So it's gonna have a a very oh, sorry. I'm just trying to get my my little video up so I can make sure I see your your comments if you get any. Cool. Okay. So what is what is adrenal fatigue? It, first of all, is it even real? So this is this is uh, somewhat controversial if you ask mainstream medicine. So if you talk to your if you talk to your your like your doctor or um, a mainstream medicine practitioner, and you say the word adrenal fatigue, they're probably going to cringe and think, "Oh no, another one of these, another one of these patients." They don't get it. They don't. They don't really see it. They see adrenal function is this spectrum, right? And unless you are on either end, so it's like your your adrenal glands are like working so hard they're going to explode, or they're so dysfunctional that they that you're basically like about to die. They don't care. They don't see a middle. They don't see that there's any problem at any point along this spectrum in the middle. And the way that you could look at this would actually be that optimally in the middle you've got like optimal health. And then as you progress towards so what's called Cushing's disease, which is where you, your adrenals basically just they just they give, they give up. They're done. They're, they're flat out. They're finished. You've got four stages. You've got stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four of adrenal fatigue. And when you're in stage four, you're basically at, at Cushing's disease. So that's that really sucks. If you're there, that's a that's a hard recovery on that one. So that's probably where you're at. If you're probably like between stage three and four, if you've got like severe chronic fatigue syndrome, like multiple debilitating health conditions, that's that's probably about where your body's at. So what's happening in these in in this situation? So your body has so much stress in the day, right? Everybody's going to say they have a stressful day, even like regardless. There's just stress in the day, like waking up. Maybe you get disturbed by your neighbours. They wake you up. That's that's stressful. Um, going for a walk, doing something, eating food, digesting food. Like all of these are are stresses on the body. You can have an argument. You can exercise. I did a lot of exercise today, and I can feel how elevated my stress hormones are as a consequence of that exercise. So even beneficial things like cold showers. Um, exercise, running, or high intensity exercise, these are all stresses on your body. And your body is able to produce a certain amount of stress hormones every single day. So think of your, I like to think of your adrenal glands sort of like a, sort of like a sponge. And every time you rest, every time you sleep, it's like you take this sponge and you go and dip it in this, in this solution of stress hormones. Your, your sponge begins to have more stress hormones available and then you wake up and you squeeze this sponge right when you wake up you have something called the cortisol the, the morning cortisol awakening response so when you wake up first thing in the morning this is what gives you energy when you first get up so this is the first clue that you might have some kind of adrenal fatigue is you wake up in the morning and you still feel tired you still feel it's really hard for you to get out of bed you feel sleepy you feel sluggish and it takes a while for you to sort of like feel like normal, you know? It's, that isn't a normal thing, right? It's been really sort of ingrained into our culture that you're supposed to get up and you, the day doesn't really start until you have your coffee, right? That's not normal, that's not a normal thing. So you wake up and your morning cortisol, your cortisol awakening response is supposed to give you the energy. So you, like a kid, you know, imagine a kid. They jump out of bed, they're so excited to go about their day. They've got high levels of cortisol and this is good. This is when we want high cortisol because it, it, it energizes us, it motivates us. It's what makes us want to go out and be productive and look for food and do all of the productive things. Work, exercise, do all of the things that we have planned. So if you get out of bed and you don't really feel very energetic, your, your body's probably struggling to produce enough cortisol. It's not able to produce enough to keep up with the debt of cortisol that you're occurring throughout the day, accruing throughout the day. So that's the first indicator that you've got some kind of, some kind of problem there. The second indicator would be later in the day, and I find this usually happens like 2 or 3 p.m., but it does depend on, wake, on when you wake up and when you go to sleep and your, the levels of your stress hormones, but I would say early afternoon, you have this crash. So what's supposed to happen is your, your adrenal glands are supposed to secrete cortisol when you wake up, and then you're supposed to use that cortisol through the day until the end of the day, and it's supposed to be this sort of like 
slow, slow decline in, in causal levels. But what I see happening, and I see this a lot in functional testing, is the level comes up, and if you have adrenal fatigue, it doesn't, so first of all, if you have some level of adrenal fatigue, it, if you're in like stage one, maybe stage two, this cortisol response will be elevated in the morning. So like, it's normal, it's actually good to have a, a peak of cortisol first thing in the morning, but there's like an upper limit of what's kind of considered like healthy or normal, they're in a normal range. And if it goes above that, your body is like overcompensating for, uh, for, 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 for extra stress that's in your life. So this is good. This means in this stage, your body is able to keep up with and produce enough of these, of these stress hormones to keep you feeling like, like functional. But what I see happening is as you begin to progress from two to three to four, this first morning spike gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's like almost insignificant. And that's when you're waking up and you're not really feeling energized first thing in the morning. So I see that early afternoon, these people that didn't get a big enough, or they had a really big spike, and then it comes crashing down, or they weren't able to produce enough in the morning to actually have energy, they have a really sluggish morning, or they have like quite a good morning, and then it gets to two, three o'clock, and then they, they crash. And they're just like really sluggish. And at this point is where they're like craving cookies or biscuits or some kind of like fast carbs or caffeine, you want some, some more caffeine, another coffee, something like that. And your, your productivity just, just shuts down. You know, I, I ran into this, I think, yesterday or the day before. I just got to, because I, I pushed myself a little bit hard earlier in the morning. And I got to like 2 or 3 p.m. and I was just like, oh, I'm crashing. I feel my body craving carbs. I'm like, I want a coffee. And it's like, okay, so this is bad. This means that I've used up all of the cortisol that was released in the morning. And I've used it already by 2 or 3 o'clock. And I've still got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock left to go. So I've still got all these hours and now I've run out of cortisol. So what happens here is when the cortisol level crashes, you feel really tired and your adrenal glands are like, oh shit, they need energy. Like, let's work really hard to give him some energy. So they have a second spike. So I, I call this the dreaded second spike because if you're if you're having this second spike, it's, it's actually a bad sign because it means you're using all of that morning cortisol and it's not getting you through the day, which is bad. But also this second spike it really imbalances your circadian rhythm. And I find that this second spike, the, the worse your adrenal fatigue is, the later in the day this will happen. So if you have that like two or 3 p.m. crash, if your adrenal fatigue isn't so bad, like 4 p.m. might come along and you're like, oh, I feel energized again. And this might be like when you feel ec like excited and you wanna go for a run, but you're actually just depleting this, this, this second release of, of cortisol. But if your body's really struggling, you might go through like four, five, six, seven, eight p.m and your body is still like trying to accumulate the strength to, to release another, another load of cortisol to get you through the day. And then this second spike happens. And just as you're supposed to be winding down and going to bed, like eight, nine, 10 o'clock, you get like this new energy and you're like, oh yeah, I've got energy now. I, I finally have energy. I didn't have energy all day and I've got it now. And it makes you want to stay up late and like watch Netflix and play video games or like scroll on social media or do even do something productive, you know? But that's not the time you want to be doing the productive thing. You want to be resting and getting ready to go to sleep so you can recharge the batteries. You can recharge that sponge so that when you wake up in the morning, it's full and ready to be squeezed and get you the energy throughout the whole day. So you get stuck in this vicious cycle where you don't have enough energy through the day, which makes you feel like depressed and frustrated because you don't get anything done. But then you have this second spike, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 p.m., which keeps you up all night, which means you don't recharge your adrenal glands properly, which means the next day the same thing happens. So you really have to try and get ahead of this. But you require a very different sort of approach, a different tactic, depending on where you're at in this spectrum. So in stage one, you don't really need to modify your behaviors very much at all. You just need to incorporate more rest and try to bring your stress down a little bit. At stage number two, we really need to start making some changes because your body is 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 is, is symptomatic. It's saying I'm depleted. I'm 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 exhausted. I I need some support. When you get to stage three, your body is like, even though it's trying to give you the energy that that you're asking for, it, it just can't keep up anymore. And at stage four, it's just like I'm done. I give up. I can't keep up with this anymore. It's like flat flatlining. So we got a question here from Jody. She says. If I get up to use the washroom at 6 a.m. and then go back to sleep, does the cortisol spike happen at 6 a.m.? No, it shouldn't do. The, I find that the cortisol spike usually happens about 30, 30 to 40 minutes after you wake up, but it's not directly tied to when you wake up. 
The thing about this is the cortisol rhythm is directly tied into your circadian rhythm. So this is the master rhythm that coordinates all of your bodily functions. So this is why it can be really helpful to do the same things at the same, the same time every day. So if you eat meals at the same time, that helps to train your circadian rhythm. If you go to bed and wake up at the same time, that helps to train your circadian rhythm. And included in that is this cortisol response, but it's also the melatonin response. So cortisol and melatonin, I should have got my whiteboard over here so I could draw it for you. Cortisol and melatonin are directly inversely correlated. So when cortisol goes up, melatonin comes down. So at night, when you wanna be feeling sleepy and getting ready to go to bed, you want your cortisol to be coming down so that your melatonin can start to come up. But guess what happens if you're having this, this double cortisol spike, you're having that second spike. Well, when that cortisol begins to spike at seven, eight o'clock, your melatonin that wants to be rising has to come back down because they're, 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 they're antagonistic, they're, they're opposed. And this is what makes you not feel like sleeping. This is what makes you not feel tired. So you need a different, you need a different approach depending on where you're at in the spectrum. If you're at stage four, Without a doubt, you need personalized help. Send me a DM, I'll, I'll help you out. I've been at stage four, it sucks, but you can recover, I can, I can help you do that. Going from stage three to stage two is the most interesting one, and I want to invite you to join me for an event that I'm gonna be hosting about this, about this step in particular. So, adrenal fatigue, very big concept, that it's obviously gonna be individualized um, needs on, on each person depending on where they're at but I'm really focusing on this stage three to stage two so moving up from three from stage three into stage two I'm going to be teaching this in a workshop it's going to be really cool I'm going to be doing it on zoom it's going to be you're going to have like a powerpoint presentation type thing so you're going to be able to see like what what a causal test looks like from stage three what it looks like in stage two and I'm going to talk about strategies that we can do to move from from three to two so I'll give you some symptomology so you can try to self-identify if you think you're you're at stage three because this is who I'm targeting the workshop for. So it's gonna be four people that are at stage three to try and get them to bump up to stage two. So in stage three, you're not really able to function as a, as a human, right? You're not able to fulfill your 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 daily desires. You you really struggle just to do like the basics and just take care of yourself, you know? So at this point, exercise is like, very small or almost a luxury, you know, it would probably be limited to walking, exercise completely out of the question. I would say you're, you're almost certainly having this double spike, so if you notice that you get tired after lunch and then early in the evening or late afternoon you get a second spike of energy, that's a really good indicator that, that, that this is where you're at, you're in this stage three, trying to progress back up to stage two kind of zone. Um, generally feeling tired, not feeling energized, not feeling productive or motivated, or just having this kind of like impending feeling of like, this like restlessness, you know? It's like, you don't feel like you can rest. You don't feel like you can relax. You don't feel that just laying there and, and resting is actually restorative, but you also don't have any energy to actually go and do anything. So you probably end up just on technology, on your phone, on your screen, something like that. So, Poor sleep is also a really good indicator. Stage three, stage two, stage four, three, and two, they, they pretty much all universally have, have poor sleep, but not necessarily. For me, I used to sleep pretty good, or I used to think I slept pretty good, but it was only like seven hours, and I would wake up, and I would have that, that sharp cortisol response immediately, and it was like, okay, I can't go back to sleep. Like Jodie was saying, she would get up at 6 a.m., but then go back to sleep. That's, that's great, you know, that's gonna really help your adrenals. But if your cortisol is really low, if you're more in the stage three, this is what used to happen to me. It's like I would wake up, go to the toilet at 6 a.m. And it's like I would just have so much adrenaline like running through my system already. It was like there is absolutely no way I could get back to sleep. It's like I would lay there with like my eye mask on in the dark room and everything. And my heart's just like, doo, 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 doo. it's like, okay, there's absolutely no chance I can sleep now. And that, that, that really sucks, you know, because if you can sleep more, you can recharge the batteries. And that's what's going to help you feel better. So if, you want, if you're interested, you think you're in stage three, you wanna to move to stage two, the workshop's gonna be free. It's gonna be available to everybody on my emailing list. So if you're on there already, don't need to do anything. You're gonna get an invite sent to you very shortly. If you're not on my emailing list just yet, make sure that you let me know and I'll leave you a link to sign up. When you sign up, you'll get the five biggest, five biggest blocks to true healing ebook, the five biggest obstacles that I see that stop people from actually healing. You know, I see, I would say I've probably seen at least 10,000 different people now. Either I've spoken to them one-to-one, -one, they've been my students, or I've seen 
in Facebook groups. Like I've I've been I've been in this area for a long time, and I can almost pinpoint when somebody's going to heal and when they're not, and when it's going to be someone that gets results quickly or whether it's going to make them take like years. You know, so you get access to this, you get access to a ten day free email course. There's so much good stuff in there. Two person case study about how we can remove how we can reverse like ninety percent of your symptoms in in three days. And yes, that's that's realistic for, for some people. Something all about gut health. Gut health ties in massively to this, right? When we're when we're when we're going to be going into this workshop, we're going to be looking at the root cause of of these kinds of problems of, of adrenal fatigue, and you have to focus your approach where the root cause is, right? So if your root cause is you're in an abusive relationship or you have a stressful relationship dynamic in the house that you're in, like you can eat organic, you can do gaps, you can do keto, you can do vegan, you can do whatever healing diet you want. It isn't going to make any difference, right? Because that's not where the problem is. And it goes the other way too. If you are doing all of these spiritual practices, you're meditating an hour every day, you're working with the trauma therapist, but you're living in a house that's moldy, it's not going to make any difference, you know, because that's not where you need to do the work. So there's often some crossover, you know, where there's some physical stress and there's some chemical stress and there's some emotional stress and some spiritual stress and it's great. It's like, great, so much stress. So what we need to do is try to take some of this stress off and give the body space so that it can recover. So if you're interested in joining me in this workshop and you're on the email list already, do nothing. You're going to get an email very shortly. It's going to be really focused, as I said, stage three to stage two. This is a stage, this is a stage progression I can cover very easily because there's a few very, very important basics that need to be covered by everyone. So if you feel like that's where you're at, make sure you come along. These tips that I'm going to give you are also helpful for people in stage four and also people in stage two already that want to move to stage one. These are like the, the foundations. So even then, it's still going to be helpful, but I'm really focusing this on stage three to stage two because that's where you get the most improvement in quality of life. You go from not being able to do the things that you want to be able to do to actually being able to do them as long as you stay kind of strict on your, your healing regime. But you, you really like dial in your sleep. You really focus on the things that recharge you. You really try to remove the things that are depleting you. And at this point, you can begin to start adding like cold showers. You can begin to add a little bit of exercise, a little bit of high intensity exercise. And then from there, the sky's the limit. You know, I'd say right now I'm, in a, a, I'm at about stage one. So I just ran so much in such hot temperatures like I could I could really feel how it was draining my body like how it was causing such significant stress and I can keep up with it you know and it's such a cool thing to go from blinded and bedridden like not literally not even able to walk to being able to run in a super hot country like 36 degrees and like and like running at a good pace and I'm fine you know sweating and no health problems I've got some some trigger points in my calves but that's just because I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a rookie runner. I'm just, I'm just starting. But like from a health perspective, nothing in my way. You know, stress hormones are fine. Digestion is more than happy. And you can do this too. You know, this is totally possible. You can absolutely do this with the right approach. So making sure that you're supporting your adrenals is a really, really good basis for supporting your gut health, for improving your, your sleep, for making it so that your life is actually livable. You know, improving, like helping the function of your adrenal glands directly correlate to improvements in your quality of life, all connected to things like energy and productivity and your mood. Your mood comes into this massively. So we're going to cover so many tips in here. We're going to be talking all about blood sugar, blood sugar dysregulations. We'll talk about sleep. We're going to talk about this. The, the one primary thing you have to make sure you do not do when we're talking about adrenal fatigue. We're going to talk about all the things that I think are really like fluff related. You know they're not necessary, that you don't need them to actually heal. So, but they can be helpful, you know, so like adrenal cocktails, um, adaptogenic herbs, different types of supplements, you know, things that you don't need, they're not, they're not required. We're really going to be focused on what is required because that's where you're going to get the results. And we're going to talk about when you can use all this other like fluffy stuff that can help, but it's not necessary. So if you're interested in that, as I said, if you're on the email list, do nothing. If you're not, make sure that you leave me a, a comment so I can send you a link so you can join my emailing list. It's going to be really cool. So I think that's everything for today. I'm really going to cover this a lot more in depth in the workshop. So if you're interested, make sure you come along. Uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to be, but I'm flushing it out and it's looking really, really good. I'm, I haven't done a workshop like this before pre presenting it on a, on a laptop. So it's going to be very, very cool. Trust me. So that's everything for me today. I'll see you soon. Let me know if you have a dream of fatigue and let me know if you're coming. I'll see you soon. Ciao.